as, as uh, Subi introduced me, I'm, uh, I'm Vesa Nopanen, and please do call me Vesku. Uh, that's the other tagline I, I keep using. And of course, say hi, uh, use the Q&A, ask me questions, but of course say hi, let me know you are there, so I'm not speaking to the empty room here. And, uh, and uh, so it can be a bit of interactive there. So use, use the Q&A for uh, kind of chatting or, or uh, for questions or comments, or if you need clarifications. This is going to be uh, kind of an exciting webinar. Uh, and you, so you better, hopefully you have the coffee and hopefully you have the seatbelt because it's going to be fast paced. So I'm not going to go things through in a slow motion, but instead this is going to be a kind of a, uh, lots of demos and yeah, I have slides too and, and there's plenty of them because there's so much information that's pres better presented through slides. But what you are going to get is the kind of the idea that uh, that what's new in Teams and uh, what's going to happen to Teams and we have that road to Ignite experience here as well. We are going to be taking a look what what we are expecting or what I'm expecting from Teams uh, related topics in at Ignite and uh, on the year 21 as well. So you can kind of start planning uh, how we would be using Teams better this year. OK, so let's start. Of course, I, I work for Sulava and uh, a slide, a short slide about us in, uh, in brief. I'm going to keep the intro part uh, real brief because uh, otherwise we will run out, out of time or just extend the webinar as usual. But we are a number one market partner in Finland and we are uh, uh, working, uh, operating globally and uh, it, uh, Sulava is now 10 years old. So and we, I have uh, amazing colleagues, uh, 130 of them. So it's uh, we are kind of a nicely uh, medium-sized company and uh, we have a uh, lots of different expertise and as you can see we have a uh, plenty of gold partnerships as well and, and that's about me so i'm a principal consultant and a team's lead uh, working for sulava and i'm also Microsoft mvp well obviously on on teams but that's in a broader sense that's office uh, apps and services i have been going through a lot of power platform and business application stuff recently as well. And uh, so it's uh, kind of a mix and match. Oops, sorry, don't don't press the wrong button. And uh, so mix and match of all techs. Uh, so it's not about just teams. And please do follow me. Uh, join my own network at LinkedIn and follow me on Twitter or ask me questions. And of course, please do follow my blog or, or join, uh, keep on reading that because that's has a lots of content and uh, inst instructions and guides. And of course, I will, I'm writing uh, now and then to Sulava's blog as well, so you should check that out too. And as a good reminder, uh, I, I think this is going to be a recurring slide in my, my spotlights is usually just keep in mind that the roadmap dates, whatever Microsoft is giving them, they are not exact, they are not fixed, they are estimates. That they are just guests and uh, guests and uh, kind of uh, guessing uh, when the feature would roll out, and there are changes. There are changes almost weekly in there. Uh, some things go forward, and sometimes things uh, come out faster. But the thing is that don't plan your production based on the roadmap date or or month there because uh, you may disappoint very badly. Sometimes the roadmap date is kind of or month is an estimate when the rollout starts. And the rollouts can take uh, one hour or one day or even several weeks, four weeks, six weeks. So you don't necessarily know when you are exactly getting that feature or not. Okay, but the agenda today, there are demos. This is not just about slides, but uh, uh, in rough sense, I will first go, go through some slides about Teams meetings and slash virtual events. That's a big theme for uh, Microsoft Teams. Uh, that was already a big theme last year, and it's a big theme this year as well. Microsoft Viva, the latest brand new announcement from Microsoft last week. I have included some information about that. And yes, I have demos about Viva 2. Then the approvals, uh, which uh, landed in Teams uh, last month. I have uh, several use cases, kind of examples about those, um, how you could be using approvals in Teams. Just a few demos about how uh, to give you better understanding. And after that uh, part, we have what else is new in Microsoft Teams. 
and uh, there's a big bunch of things and, and it's uh, of course what's what's coming up is important for everyone so you can prepare what's happening and then we are taking a look at that uh, market ignite 21 expectations or wishes or however you want to say and the coffee or the slash tea mug is uh, reminding you that yeah, this is going to be a, a good set of 90 minutes so uh, hopefully you have something to drink there um, or, or uh, having a early lunch or if you have a lunch or a kind of a late breakfast then that's fine too. All right. It will be just the meeting teams. I, I really uh, like this statement Microsoft did in the last night. So getting a new one uh, in, in a month. But uh, things meetings and these live events, we are now in a Microsoft 365 live event, basically Teams live event. They are coming together, and, and this this will make uh, this kind of webinars much more interesting. They will it will make the webinars much more interactive. I think the biggest thing right now is that this is very one way. The only feedback channel I have from you is the Q and A. Some people prefer that. Well, you are not interrupting anything or like that. But on the other hand, there are so awesome features in Teams uh, already, and even better ones are coming up. And uh, it will make uh, these webinars much more um, enjoyable. Yes, I could be using uh, a kind of a producing tools like an OBS Studio or some other tools to kind of make a virtual stage and have my picture on top of that uh, slide there, uh, blocking the view there, but uh, on the or doing different scenes. Yeah, that would be possible, but uh, uh, it would make things more complicated and. When the, this uh, kind of roadmap continues and when there is going to be more feature parity between meetings and live events, uh, it will be much more easier. It will be making much more sense in uh, to be starting using that instead of uh, uh, doing things the hard way with the production software. There are scenarios when you really want to use the production software, you want to create those scenes, you want to create a true virtual stage. But for most of the most of us, or most of meetings, most of events are going to be much simpler, and and we can take the advantage of Microsoft Teams, and that's the kind of thing that's going to be uh, that's a big theme uh, this year as well, and it's that's the reason why I'm including this as first. There, I know people are busy; some may not be hanging around throughout the whole webinar, but uh, for uh, but so for those ones, you get the kind of the uh, to what, what's hottest with, uh, with meetings in Teams currently and what's coming up um, first. All right. Uh, something that came out uh, some time ago, this uh, uh, breakout rooms came uh, in December or 9th, something like that. Uh, so it, it's been there two months already. So it's not the freshest part, but uh, it's kind of a flashback since uh, the last spotlight where, where I didn't have the breakout rooms yet. But uh, in a nutshell, those breakout rooms are full Teams meetings. They are, you can use whiteboard, you can use sharing, you can use chat, you can record those. Every breakout room when you kind of uh, split the main meeting to breakouts, each of them is at their own, um, own meeting. And they apply to the meeting policies as well. So if you have a lobby on for externals, for example, uh, uh, in tenant-wide situation, then it applies. Somebody from your tenant has to be there and approve people into meeting uh, breakout rooms. So for, as a best practice for those people who are creating the breakout rooms or having externals there, keep in mind that you should be tuning those meeting policies to fit those needs so those people can decide per meeting if they are really going to be using those or not. Uh, rooms are created uh, during the online meeting. So you cannot pre-create them currently. Uh, this is a much request, uh, requested feature and I'm kind of hoping that we will see those in the, at Ignite or at least put to, uh, they will be on the roadmap at, the, uh, roadmap at the Ignite. But uh, we have to wait a month for that or, or three weeks, three and a half weeks. But uh, currently you go to the meeting, you create the rooms and, and then uh, you split the persons on uh, to those rooms or, or let the teams do that automatically. You can have up to 50 breakout rooms there. 
And meeting organizer is the one who is creating the meeting invite. Uh, he is the one, or uh, that person is the one who manages the rooms. So that's the, that's the person who has the breakout rooms button there and, and can kind of admin them. Again, uh, that's another uh, much requested feature that, uh, <coughs> that there should be a, a, a possibility to add more um, uh, organizers to the breakout rooms or, or managers there. And yeah, Microsoft has heard that, and let's hope the uh, Ignite for that. That's kind of times crossed there. And but what you can do already is that meeting rooms can be opened and closed multiple times. So when you are creating them, you just uh, you can go, uh, go to breakouts. You can come back to the main meeting, continue with the presentation for everyone, and then you can again break out to small rooms, uh, possibly keeping the same assignments and then coming back. So you can create quite an innovative and interesting webinar out of that or, or um, event or, or kind of workshop. So this is a great feature. I have written a blog post about uh, those breakout rooms. Go ahead and check that out if, uh, if you want to know. So it's uh, I keep on updating with latest info whenever that it's up uh, and I have, whenever I have uh, that available. So it's a kind of ongoing guide to breakout rooms. Something else that's coming up that's really interesting is that the registration for Teams meetings. And it has gotten finally a good uh, kind of uh, announcement that the rollout will begin in early March. So ignite again, and it will take uh, several weeks apparently for the rollout to complete. And on default, it will be like um, only for internal meetings. So when you, you can create a kind of internal training scenarios, for example, with that. So, so you have a kind of webinar capability coming to Teams meetings, and or, but you can use that for training. So uh, if you have an internal training, you want people to sign up for that, you create the registration part. And that's a default, only uh, you can create those registrations, but only for uh, organization-wide uh, events. So you are, uh, you are limited to that, but that's not the whole truth because admins can authorize uh, meeting organizers to create a public registration. So you can create a public page where people can sign up for a webinar and the meeting, meeting organizer can then track the activity, like the engagement report and then see what's happening, uh, how, how the registration is going and so. If you are a small organization or you don't have a marketing automation in place already, or, or uh, you just want to do things in a, a very simple and Teams way, agile way, then this might be a very good tool to kind of create a very, very lightweight uh, uh, registration and, and uh, engagement uh, follow up for, for, them for the meeting or the, for the webinar. Or it could be a workshop or it could be uh, uh, even a community, event, something like that, something that you want to keep lightweight. And that's one tied to the single meeting, so you cannot really create a big, uh, uh, big um, kind of event with the several meetings, at least not now. So, but this is what what's been told there. And those admins who want to start tracking how you can do the changes, that uh, you have to use PowerShell. Uh, I checked that yesterday; they weren't there yet. <laughs> Of course, I wanted to check if I could be uh, doing that already, but uh, it may be that I have to wait a few weeks. Basically, you can allow that in the meeting policy that who can create those uh, uh, meeting registrations. It's enabled on default, so anybody can do it. You can disable that if you want to limit that. But who can register is the key that it's either everyone in your organization or really everyone. But everyone in your organization is the default. Power apps in Teams meetings, uh, that's also one of the great uh, latest additions. Uh, in the last webinar I had showed that you can add polls to Teams meetings. No, we can't add polls to live events, at least now. But um, uh, when thinking about the roadmap uh, or, or the uh, Microsoft promise that uh, that uh, meetings and live events are coming together, then probably uh, I'm not holding my breath for live event uh, polls for now. Of course, I could be surprised. But uh, the Power Apps is another kind of a Mm, type of application you can add to Teams meetings. And uh, you can create your own Power Apps. You can create, you may have already some Power Apps. And you can configure them uh, to, to be a meeting compliant. So you can add them like we have a 
Q&A now in the Teams meeting, but that's the place where you have the participants list or you have the chat. In that place, you could have the power and, and you could interact with them. Well, there are some limitations. Uh, one of those is that you have to be using the Teams desktop client with new meeting experience and power apps generally work within only with your same uh, within your organization. So uh, it's an excellent opportunity to create some uh, tools that people in your organization can use. You can add them to the meeting where you have externals as well, but they won't be able to use them. And because of the layout and, and because of the, how you want to define the power apps, you have to be a bit selective, of course, what you want to add to meetings. You just don't want to add anything there. But uh, think about those uh, that would create value, like uh, surveys, uh, rich surveys that are really personal ones or sharing some of the information, create adding tasks to yourself or, or to someone else or, or adding things to the backlog uh, throughout the meeting something that uh, that would be really useful to do from within the same meeting context. So, virtual events and, and uh, this is kind of a little bits and bits uh, that are adding uh, to the Teams meeting experience. And that meeting experience is getting better. It's basically scaling from some uh, small meetings to town halls to virtual events. That's the promise. You have a very small one and then you can extend that to the uh, large broadcasts and there are co there are already several features out like breakout rooms you can use whiteboard internally you have the participant report you have the ndi support uh, you can mute the meeting chat now if you want you can use spotlight to uh, highlight somebody who's speaking uh, in the teams meeting and, and you can have the audience controlled with hard mute and, and uh, uh, they can have to use raise hand, for example. And you can add those polls and those power apps to the meeting. So, so you can see you have already a lot of rich uh, functionalities. But that what is going to be really breaking this is this most of this stuff is coming at ignite so basically March, uh, March, early, early April. So there are things like uh, uh, the large teams interactive meetings. So the limit is now in docs, it's 300 and uh, st stayed as 300 and it's going to be 1000. Overflowing uh, up to 20,000 uh, attendees that can view the presentation. So you, you might have first the 1000 persons in the meeting that can use all Teams features. They could be using those polls, they could be using uh, chat, uh, opening their mic. And then you could have the other kind of uh, 20K attendees there or participants. Uh, who can view that just like you are viewing this now. So that's a kind of big thing, making things easy. You, you set up meet, uh, your event in Teams meeting and it just scales out. Registration support engagement dashboard I already said, they should be coming out uh, soon as well. Meeting recap, uh, so you can have a, the meeting recording and some of the participant report and information in there. So it's a kind of a very nice way to have to, to see the, what was happening in the meeting. The dynamic layouts is going to be the one that where Teams is managing how uh, how many cameras there is uh, already shown, uh, is the content shared. So it's going to take advantage of the space or, or the canvas there and, and put the camera views there in a more dynamic fashion. So it's just not the kind of roll of uh, videos on, on the bottom or you have to just, and, and then you have the content. It's going to be a bit more rich Custom views is going to uh, make things like the uh, uh, webinars very easy or company town halls where you have that uh, situation where you, where you can have your picture overlaid or video uh, overlaid on top of the content. So it's kind of uh, what we see when people are uh, doing news, uh, weather reports, and, and when we see what people are do using that with those production tools using the NDI support. So, so that's going to be more simpler. That's going to be more easier with Teams, and that's what I'm looking after because it's uh, if I can just click it on, hey, that's even better. I don't have to do more setups. Live captions, that's for accessibility, of course, because then uh, hopefully they will understand my English as well, but at least for those countries uh, with native English speakers, it's going to help a lot when you have the speaker attribution there, so you know who's speaking and saying what 
uh, when you are seeing the live captions. That's a really useful when you are coming from a different country, that English is not your native language, or you are hard at hearing, for example, or you just can't put the um, voice on. You are, you are the, the kind of a, uh, late at night and watching, watching the webinar there for some strange reason, but uh, you can turn the audio on, for example, and things like that. And uh, what I'm really waiting is the, the bottom three on the right. Basically, the disabling attendee video on Teams meeting that's, uh, that has the roadmap date. Yesterday it was April, now it's May. Uh, what I did tell about the roadmap dates or estimates. Uh, so it uh, uh, it's coming uh, this spring. And uh, of course, uh, what I'm really hoping is to have a more formal Q&A and the hide attendees list coming to Teams, but I haven't heard about those. And of course, the big question mark is what's, what else is coming to the roadmap in, at the Ignite? Uh, a few things before running the demo, demos. I know this is taking always a long time. And meeting link, uh, it's uh, when you do a meet now, a personal meet now, it's going to be a lot easier to kind of get that meeting link you can share in chat or email or wherever. So, so you can kind of invite people and, and share the chat. Now you have to do it the hard way, you have to navigate there and get extract the link and, and then start adding that. This is going to make it a lot, lot easier. It will kind of prompt it out uh, very nicely. Uh, Teams meeting recordings and the new stream. This is an update from the previous one. I'm not going to go in details like uh, why it is important is, of course, that Teams meetings are going uh, to the SharePoint and World OneDrive scheduled meetings. Uh, go to OneDrive and me channel meetings go to the SharePoint uh, sites and everyone gets an in internal meeting invitees get a uh, link there and yeah you can use them the meetings for uh, with SharePoint features full features you can share them externally you can manage them you can have governance compliance and they are included in search so that's our kind of big things there and why this is a great thing and this is of course a change that's happening uh, it's already happening for some of you. If you haven't kind of opted out of that, you are or your recordings are already going to SharePoint on OneDrive. OneDrive. And uh, GGZ, uh, GGZ is getting that or, or also. But what's next? Uh, in just a few weeks, March 1st, uh, it doesn't matter if you opted out or not. Your meeting recordings are going to the OneDrive and SharePoint. The change is there. And for education customers, uh, ed education tenants, that's happening on, uh, in July. And there's going to be more uh, new uh, stream web apps. There's going to be exploration of the meeting recordings, like so they are not going to be cluttered uh, in the OneDrive and SharePoint. The default will be 60 days and admins can change it. It's not out there yet, but once it comes, it's of course important that admins either change it, they can uh, max it out to one year, or, or they can keep it at 60 days and people then can go ahead and change that. So, okay, this is something I want to preserve. And there's going to be migration from Stream Classic to New Stream. The New Stream is going to be basically in SharePoint. So you will have a nice set of web, app, uh, uh, web apps there. And the uh, new web app uh, for Stream itself should be also coming up, but I don't really know if it's just also a collection of uh, web parts or is it going to be uh, there's a question about uh, power up since our Teams meetings will not for externals, uh, even if they have a power up license. I have to admit I didn't test it, so I have to say no, but uh, I would uh, think if they can use power apps, it should work for the externals. But uh, that's something I didn't test. So I cannot give you 100% answer for that. Unfortunately. And uh, now we can go to the demos. Yeah, there's a lot of thing, things there, but uh, it's it's good to take a look at the demos after 25 minutes anyway. So I have a, a meeting here. Yeah, there's also a, a demo spotlight meeting that I added, and I already activated it, so it it should be up and running there. And I added a few persons there because I just wanted to show how you can add the power up uh, to the meeting. So this is the power I exported that as a Teams application. 
uh, with a specific configuration. So it can be, it, it is basically told that it's optimized for meetings. There are, you could use the forms polls there. You can use poly uh, with the subscription and the other tools that are already there and optimized for meeting, uh, rich meeting experience. Or I could be adding something else for the meeting, but uh, these are the ones here on the top. These are the ones that uh, are uh, actionable inside the Teams meeting uh, utilizing the desktop client. And now it's happening. Let's just add that one. And it's going to be adding the survey app there. And, and we can see it's, it's just like a whiteboard here or, or any, anything else. And we can have the whiteboard uh, here happening or the power app uh, in the tab uh, outside of the meeting. If I add a document or something else to the meeting, which is also a great, uh, great practice, one, uh, uh, one note or something like that, then, uh, yeah, I can access them uh, through these tabs. Uh, for example, if I add a one note, uh, let's get my notebooks or create a new one. And um, let's just add that one. And I get uh, access to the one note very easily. So it's very usable through the meeting. So instead of using any of the uh, things like uh, the meeting notes, please don't use that because uh, the meeting notes is a bit tricky. Uh, something to note from there is that if you use meeting notes, make sure that you have everybody invited here who you want to access those notes. But on the other hand, what I really recommend is the use of the uh, use of the uh, uh, one note, which is not uh, working as it should now. But all right, but that uh, one note was not the point here. The point is here that we go to the meeting, and in the meeting we can see the application. I have already some demo users here, and I can see I have that uh, survey application. That's the uh, just an example application from Power App uh, uh, from Power App um, templates. Uh, I just uh, kind of customized it with Solava pictures and made a few changes there. Yeah, and, uh, and then we can some, uh, uh, let's uh, put the focus there, we can add different text. But the point is, it's going to be, a, it's a very rich experience to use this. How does this look for externals? Well, if you if we take a look at the Amy, who is not in here, and he, uh, she's using the uh, web client, we don't have any indication about if we create polls, they will pop into meeting chat. But no, uh, this is an external and using a web client, so they don't have an access. But uh, and if I go to the uh, other user here, uh, this is I'm using. Uh, sorry, I'm just uh, keeping this on purpose uh, on side note for purpose or so uh, in smaller area here. But uh, this is an external. And no, I cannot see that. I don't even see the power up. I'm, I don't have a license for, I haven't licensed that user for power ups either. So that's a good question, and I'm going to definitely test this one. Um, uh, so, so to see if that works. Okay. Okay. What else we can do in uh, what's new in meetings? If you are running a uh, uh, the public preview, sorry. And uh, that you will have so see this that you have these uh, reactions available, and that is the reason why I'm using this uh, here on the side. Basically, if I'm going to be showing you the reactions, let's close that one, one, and open the uh, reactions from here, so you can see that. Okay, of course it's not visible. Let's try the other way. Um, my user is there, so. See if I can uh, position both screens on the screen at the same time. So I'm just uh, giving some applause, so it will show up on top of my name there or in the top of the presentation. That's even more important. And uh, but the reactions are fun. And uh, if you go to meeting options uh, through the three dots here, you can see two other uh, kind of two additions. The allow reactions is there. I just tested this uh, this morning because I didn't see this yesterday. Is that uh, uh, it doesn't seem to work? So at least not during the meeting. But the ideally, when it rolls out, you can turn off the off the reactions so people won't be able to use them during the meeting. And there's also this meeting chat, like uh, enabled disabled in meeting only. 
this is the new one, so I can disable the meeting chat. It will disable it also from me. So everybody is, its chat is turned off uh, for the duration of the meeting. So nobody can uh, use the chat uh, right now. It's there, but uh, you can't use it. So there's a kind of clear stage for the presenter. And the great part is the in meeting only. So it chat is active only during the meeting. And the organizer can go ahead and change this during the meeting. So you can enable the chat, disable the chat, and kind of open the Q&A part or free text if you just want to uh, cut the clutter, uh, for example, in town hall, so people are not uh, throwing things there, is that they would be using Reaccess, for example. Uh, as we are watching both uh, presentation video and video uh, of the presenters simultaneously, uh, both of them are reused in size, would it be nice to have the ability to reserve room for PowerPoint in the video, let's say PowerPoint in the upper right corner. Um, video, I think the, what you are perhaps referring is the dynamic views or perhaps the custom views um, kind of a, if you want to have them both in there. Or if you want to create a truly unique virtual stage, then you, you would be using the NDI and OBS Studio currently if you want to do that. So you could be kind of bring that up. But if you mean about the spotlight and the uh, showing the content, then uh, currently it's of course it's very limited. But um, you could use OBS Studio for that, or you could hopefully the dynamic views would be able to use to see that one uh, open camera in there, and then there would be have some larger than it is now, and then you would have the as well. So hopefully it will uh, work out nicely there. Uh, one more thing I want to show really quick here uh, uh, after the meeting chat part is the breakout rooms. So if you haven't used this, I have done demoed this in several places already, but uh, not in the spotlight. So basically you just, if you are a meeting organizer, you can see the icon, you can start creating the rooms and you can assign people automatically uh, to those rooms or you can put them manually. They are online, we are online, we can create those rooms and, and then we can see the experience here that we have two rooms. We can rename them as, as an organization. Uh, we can make this uh, called spot and perhaps the other one is called, uh, let's say uh, it's light. So we have a couple of rooms. We also have uh, settings like room settings uh, there. Uh, so automatically move participants to room, yes. Otherwise it will ask, do you want to go there or do you want to go back to the main meeting? And also controlling how they can return to the main meeting or not. So this is something, uh, if you want to kind of prevent them from uh, coming back to the main meeting by themselves, it's possible. But of course they can kind of uh, um, close the breakout room and then join the main meeting. That's possible as well. So it's not a full booth, but uh, it's preventing normal users from moving around. Then uh, what you can do here is that we have people, we can go ahead and uh, see, the, see them here and we, uh, we could reassign them to an unassigned roster or we can move them between rooms if we want. And then I will just open the room or start the room and, and we can see uh, people are being moved, moved there automatically, except me, because I'm the meeting organizer, I can move between rooms if I want. And how do I see that? In here, it will say that, okay, the session has started, you will be automatically moved in 10 seconds. So just uh, wait, uh, wait a few moments here, and now we are getting in there and, and waiting for others to join. I think I've moved everybody away from this room already. Um, uh, yeah, that, that was the only person. It's opening there and uh, that's in the meeting, so I can't really uh, do anything there. I could close that room or if they leave the room, then I can reassign them to different rooms. So, But when they are in a room, I cannot move them between rooms. Uh, so that's kind of the uh, disabled part. And when I, I can then send the announcements, that is basically uh, rooms are closing, that, is, uh, that are sent to different rooms. And as for the showing uh, what's happening here, 
you can put uh, this works on a web clients or mobile teams, so it doesn't really matter where your attendees are. They could be using the mobile teams, web client or teams desktop, but the organizer who's creating those rooms has to use teams desktop client with the new meeting experience. And, and uh, currently there can be only one. The Highlander quotes are so useful in, in, in these uh, webinars. So then we close the rooms, everybody comes back and once they are back, we, I could reopen the rooms and, and uh, go forward there. Okay, it takes a while, but the, the things are happening after the 10 seconds and etc. People are starting to appear in this uh, main meeting automatically. And uh, if this, uh, I could go in and open a specific room or delete that, or I can start the rooms again. And even if I close this meeting and uh, I, I rejoin it, let's assume the organizer has a, a kind of a, a, a breaking the net. I can go back to breakout rooms and I can see, okay, they are not at the rooms out there, but people are not as assigned. And this is a bit bad situation, but I can come back and recreate the rooms. It will delete them and I can uh, kind of reorganize people automatically there. This reorganize is also very useful if you want to kind of just, okay, I've created only one, but if I want to kind of mix the groups again, there's some random, uh, uh, random occurrence happening. Okay, so that we are not running uh, fully out of time, going to go forward uh, with other parts. Yeah, it looks awesome, right? Uh, this is the what I'm what I, what is being uh, scheduled in the roadmap for March or February. Basically, uh, basically this month and the next month. So what I, how I see this is, this is something that's already happening um, uh, during uh, at the Ignite. These are kind of features that should be starting to roll out during the Ignite. There's a lot of them. What I really want to highlight is the sharing UI, which is going to be uh, slightly different than uh, currently. The sharing uh, button is going to be there, but then it's going to look a bit different in here. So it's going to be in the same context in, instead of you having to move to the bottom left where what do you or uh, put to the bottom what you want to share so that's a great one uh, in there and uh, of course these overflow meetings those I already went through uh, are there as well the live events support you could do a, be a presenter uh, using an iPad and you could be an anonymous presenter those are big things because uh, it will make it a bit easier currently the external access for Teams meetings uh, concerning whiteboard is important because currently it's limited to in organization only, but then you could start using the whiteboard with externals when you have a Teams meeting. And, and that's that's a really great thing because uh, I don't think the 1000 persons editing the whiteboard is going to be much fun or even if it supports that, but uh, you, since you share the whiteboard to the meeting, the program, you could make it a read-only for attendees, so you could be showing that whiteboard and, and you could do it, the editing there and people would see what you are doing there. And then perhaps you're uh, uh, leaving, uh, giving the pen to someone else so they can go ahead and start editing that. And there's going to be things like branded lobbies and stuff. Uh, and for Mac users, you are happy to know that you can start sharing the computer sounds hopefully soonish as well. And yeah, there's there's a big thing, big things. The meeting chat access changes is not about the meeting options I showed. It's about how the meeting chat is going to be on default. There's going to be changes like how uh, the invited persons are going to be there, or if you have a recurring meeting that only the invited ones are the ones having the access uh, even on default. And if you go forward, things like video filters and the disable enable attendees video is coming out. That's a really interesting part. I didn't include almost anything about Teams rooms in my webinar today uh, because there's lots of stuff happening for Teams rooms and collaboration parts, Teams panels, every like basically to all Teams devices. That's that would be a webinar of its own. Uh, but uh, I did include that if you are using a Teams mobile in May, you should be able to or May, uh, May June, summer, uh, you should be able to kind of cast your Teams meeting or, or info, 
screen from your team's mobile to the team's room. So you are in the room and you want to share there, you could be using team's room as a kind of a, a casting device. The integrated card captioning is interesting. And that's basically the, uh, the reader that should be coming. There are uh, real-time captioning. Uh, so, so the users will, will be able to view the captions coming from the card provider. So let's let's how kind of a you get get the kind of a, a better better captioning uh, to, uh, to these events uh, through that. Basically, uh, uh, I think this is about more like you pre-record the captioning, so you don't have to rely on the uh, on the automated translation. But uh, so it's it's kind of there's going to be captioning providers to, uh, to show you how you can stream that. There's not much information there. That's the uh, what's in the roadmap. And of course, live captions and supporting more languages. That's a really good thing. And the real time data for admins, like what's happening in live events. That's a that's a big thing too. Um, okay. Just checking for the questions there. Um, Microsoft Viva. That's a, uh, another big thing that came out. That came out last week, as I said. Uh, it's basically a new bundle or collection of um, solutions that you can be using. These solutions rely on Teams, SharePoint, Microsoft 365 overall, or on uh, most of them are relying on existing capabilities. Some of those are extending those, and some of those are new. Something like Viva Connection, Viva Connections is something like keeping everyone informed. That's a kind of big thing. Uh, bring that information toge together. So you, and so you have that integrated experience. This is just like also a bit of branding, I think. Then uh, Viva Insights, uh, if you have used My Analytics, it's going to be, uh, you already know about that. Viva Topics is the new one, and the Viva Learning makes the learning kind of uh, built in in there. There's going to be Teams applications for all of these. That's why they are in this webinar, of course, and then kind of how you can bring that information, surface that information and knowledge there, bring the learning possibilities directly into Teams or to your internet. So, so this is, uh, if you think about this, this is supporting remote work, this is supporting the new way of working when we are not that much present on, on the office, or we won't be. It's going to be more like a hybrid model in the future, but uh, making it easier to access that information, even more easier than it is today. And the insights is important because it will uh, concentrate on the well-being and, and health, uh, mental health as well. So those are four interesting topics, and I will dive through uh, each one of them very briefly. And uh, yes, I will have demos about this later as well. The Viva topics, uh, I wanted to include this one first. This is built on the project Cortex, and uh, the SharePoint Syntax was the previous deliverable, and now there's a Viva topics coming up, or it's actually out there. So you can uh, access these topics through Teams, you can access these topics through SharePoint, uh, so your intranet. And uh, so some of those topics are being built automatically, and, and then you can add an edit, edit to pages manually. I wouldn't rely on this working on anything else but the English content, and uh, because the SharePoint syntax, I don't think it was supporting anything English at the moment. Of course, eventually the language support will widen. But if you are an uh, English uh, organization using English as your primary language and documentation and content is in English, this is perhaps something interesting to look at. It will start showing up in search. It will start showing up in keywords, as you can see on the. Uh, GIF that's uh, rolling there. It, you can use that through Teams messages. You can use it through uh, different pages and apps as well, and even on mobile. Of course, it's still on the kind of a early stage, so you cannot really um, uh, use it that yeah, use that yet. Yeah, use that all the features yet. Sorry, mixing up words. Uh, it will be possible to integrate the other systems for uh, kind of to have that graph-based content connectors there, so you can use Salesforce data, service now data, and of course, if you are using Azure services, then the world or sky or the universe is the limit there. So, so that's going to be very extendable on on that, and it's not a free one. It's going to be five 
uh, bucks per user per month. Almost called them eddies. Uh, guess what I've been playing recently. But um, so five bucks per user per month. And but there's a free trial, and that's what I've been uh, trialing now. And I can demo uh, some parts of this because not everything is rolled out uh, yet. There is, for example, there is the Teams application yet. But uh, there are some parts there, but it's still kind of warming up. Let's say that. Let's say that. But eventually you will be able to uh, kind of build those uh, topic trees so you can find that information and, and enrich that uh, information so people are aware about what's happening. Uh, Viva Insights, it's kind of a combination of well being insights application. The insights application that was in the roadmap uh, that has been transferred to more or less to Viva Insights, it's now in public preview. There's a bit of limitations there. But in the uh, months, it will get those well being parts like virtual commute that was promised or told about in the last Ignite, Edge Space, and then you can eventually also integrate that to Viva Learning. And, but you have a of Viva Insights Lite, and then you have the full version if you have a workplace analytics in place. So, so it, uh, it will pick the selected content from there. As you can see, that, that GIF is really nice, but uh, if, when you see the demo, it's of course a very, very well uh, more limited. Of course, it's a very early stage in public preview, so we don't really know what's, uh, what the free version is going to look like. But uh, with, and with uh, people using the workplace analytics, you are going to get you know, so much more out of that. Uh, the Viva connections is one big thing. Uh, that's basically what was called the SharePoint home app in the roadmap. And, uh, I think the connections is also a collection of web parts, so you can kind of have more richer web parts and feeds that you can add to the uh, SharePoint experience. Then there's Jammer in the uh, integration, like Jammer was as the uh, Jammer stories was announced earlier as well, but that was already again mentioned there, like uh, and having the Jammer conversation going on, so it's going to have more support for that, which is a bit strange. Of course, we are talking about Teams up here, but because that uh, SharePoint intranet is not just within Teams. It, you can use it through the app, uh, connections app, which is my guess is basically the SharePoint or the SharePoint app. So there's going to be some rebranding uh, of, of the old tech and then combining thing, these, the, these things together to have this Aviva connections. It's more business plan, perhaps our business kind of view to look at things. Uh, this is uh, uh, this doesn't have the uh, SharePoint or any other technical term there, but instead it's about, hey, this is the experience, the new ex employee experience we are getting, and we can use these things uh, from different places. This will be coming to desktop teams first, uh, so you are looking at the time frame between Ignite and Summer, and uh, there should be the mobile application coming a bit later, and it will get more features. They didn't disclose what kind of features, so let's hope Ignite will reveal some of those. But uh, we'll see. But that's a kind of a big thing, and there's no, not a word about the licensing. Will it be included in uh, E3, for example? So we will see if, uh, how it kind of uh, bundles up here. And the, uh, the last part is about the Microsoft Viva Learning. That's a uh, kind of a repackaging of a. Uh, uh, learning pathways with the new application, more or less, and uh, kind of bringing in new capabilities. But it's going to be kind of a central hub for learning. And because it's connected to Viva Topics, it's that's the really fun part or, or great part in here. I think that you are getting the learning suggestions, you are uh, discovering learnings through search. So it's going to bring the learning to be more present in our uh, employee experience. And that's perhaps the, about one thing about Microsoft Viva is how do you service things? How do you integrate things to employee experience? This is not just about, or these are not just about the intranet part or the SharePoint part or Teams part. It's more about the wider topic, how you combine people to the knowledge, to the insights, and to the continuous learning we need because the world is changing. The world changed and it's changing all the time. We need to learn new things and we need to have an easy way to start learning. And it will integrate to lots of learning uh, providers. There was mentioned the LinkedIn Learning. 
Microsoft Learn Skills of Coursera plural, plural, uh, plural site, that's a difficult way, and ED, ADX and more. So you can use, you are maybe using one of those or two of those for learning, and you can start kind of bringing that learning content directly to Teams. And the LinkedIn Learning uh, has also that, uh, kind of a great thing there is that there's going to be embedded content player there. So you can kind of view the uh, learning through when you are in Teams. And that was a great looking picture. Um, it's in private preview, so no demos about that today, um, but uh, it should come out later this year. Uh, is it going to be summer? Is it going to be autumn? Or is it going to be Christmas? I have no idea. But uh, uh, let's hope for a public preview to be announced at Ignite. Uh, I'm holding my hope for so I wish for that, but uh, I, of course I don't know if that's going to happen. A few things before I run to my next step, step of demos. I uh, just want to bundle things, things up so I don't jump between presentations and demos all the time. Uh, approvals in Microsoft Teams is a kind of a, the application that came out in uh, January. And this allows you to see all the approvals within Teams that are happening in Office 365. And this is a really key thing. The approvals were there, you were able to create a document sign-offs and things, but uh, you would have to respond in the email when you get the notification or go to the not that fancy looking uh, uh, flow part where you can see everything you need to approve. So that's uh, kind of a, another big thing that it's in Teams. So you can see them easily. That, uh, and the user interface is mobile friendly and you can do that uh, really easily. And you can also create manual ad hoc approval requests. That's a big thing like, hey, I need a, can I go to this event? Can I start working on this project? Hey, here's the project plan. So, so you can kind of um, create a lightweight way uh, of having those. Or, or uh, we need to approve this uh, soda order. Uh, or something else. But the power is really in Power Automate. That's how you start kind of creating those cloud flows and then uh, creating custom approval processes directly into Teams. So you could have some basic stuff like up, uh, approvals, leads, opportunities, like some, somebody is submitting a new opportunity or lead. Perhaps somebody from sales team is going to approve that before it's been written to CRM. So, so you can use approvals more than before. Traditionally, you would be using kind of ad mentioning and saying, okay, is this okay? Or asking somebody to notice that ad mention and then act on that. But uh, due to the high number of uh, ad mentions or, or notifications, those may be lost. So if you go to the approval app, then you can see all the approvals there. Yes, you get notifications, so perhaps you kind of uh, keep remembering, okay, I got that notification, perhaps I have something to approve. Or uh, you can create those smarter flows there that will uh, remind the person if they haven't approved that, that they should be kind of uh, taking care of that. So that, that's something I'm going to demo in uh, several scenarios uh, soon. Because I, have to, I want to go through a few things about what's, uh, what else is fresh in Teams. Uh, the public preview, you already saw that in action. Uh, the admins can set the policy who can use the Teams public preview. It's, technically, it's string 3.6, but uh, 10 users need to go there and activate them themselves if they have, if they can use it. Some of the features they can use in the public preview are not ava uh, available. Like create, uh, the last time I tested, I didn't test that in this week, I admit, is that when I was creating a new team, I couldn't see the templates there if I were in the public preview version, but uh, in a normal version, the templates are there. Most likely they are just aligning these thoughts so everything that works in the G. A normal version should be working in public preview, but right now I, I have my suspicions. So the users who are in the public preview are usually the ones who are testing things in, in advance. Like the press, uh, a few things are out there already, like using the web browser for the Getter More Than Large Galleries and uh, uh, going through some of the and you put the notifications to be the Windows 10 native notifications, for example, or using the presenter view in a PowerPoint presenting when you are sharing that in a meeting, etc. So there's uh, lots of features there. There's a uh, question about this. We were forcing to enable Yammer for the org to get it running. 
Uh, I don't think so. I think you are just going to miss those opportunities there in the uh, in the SharePoint sites. I don't really think the Jammer is going to be enforced. It's going to be enhanced with Jammer, but uh, not enforced. For example, I don't see a small any smaller organization using the Jammer unless they have already been using that uh, very effectively. effectively. Uh, we use learning lab pathways for learning related to 365. Do you know uh, if there's a plan to have that content in uh, Viber Learning? Um, not specifically, but I think the Microsoft Learning is hopefully referring to the learning pathways in there. But I would such a, I have my suspicions that it's it's uh, kind of enabled there because it would seem very odd to remove that learning pathway from the Viva Learning because it's been something that has been published. Uh, if I had to guess, I would say that Viva Learning is kind of the next step for the pathways, but hey, you never know how it's in, in reality. And some of the features, uh, demo is coming really, really soon. It's basically, uh, I'm going to show the approval. I mentioned that the task publishing, so you can have a list of tasks you publish to different teams or selected teams, and you can follow up how the teams are progressing with them. That's going to be in a demo soon. And, and uh, like the SharePoint app updates, calendar, uh, channel calendars, and whiteboards as well. Uh, something to keep in mind if I don't remember to show it in the demo is that if you are sending emails to team channel, the more folder name has been just updated. So the structure is different than before. It's now in the format of email messages underscored, the month number underscored the year. So it's going to be slightly different. So you can create even larger teams in uh, teams soon, and that's why it's very uh, strange for uh, Viva uh, plus Jammer features, because uh, you can a lot more organizations are going to be using Teams instead of Jammer. There are some benefits in Jammer, of course. Uh, if you have a large organization or you are already using that, you know how to use it. Basically, that's been adopted and, and that's been widely used. There are good features in there, but yeah, that's. Uh, Kind of having the yet another tool syndrome again, and um, when people are using Teams more and more all the time. The new file sharing experience, it was rolling out in autumn, it was rolling out in December, it was rolling out in January, it's still rolling out. It shows in the roadmap it's rolling out, so that's why it's in the new features. But hey, let's do uh, There's so many, there's so much stuff here, so. I think it's always good to uh, start demoing at some point. I kind of wanted to uh, do these demos in two parts instead of jumping between back and forth the presentation this time. Give me feedback, is this a good one or should I go back and forth more? I, I can adjust. Um, all right, uh, for the public preview, if you have it enabled for your account, you can go to your uh, profile picture and about and you can hear here click on the public preview so you know you are using those uh, new features. So that's um, and that's how you activate it. And I already already mentioned that with the public preview, you can put the Teams notifications uh, to the Windows area. So in the notifications, you can choose the notification style. It's uh, Teams built in or Windows. And if you are suffering from those uh, message pop-ups showing some confidential messages to others when you are sharing your screen or somebody is not, not very often in these days uh, sitting next to you or standing next to you when you are doing something on your computer, you can turn the previews off. And the notifications will come here, so you can see there's more notifications here. I was doing some screenshots, but you can see that the Action Center is showing uh, the, the notifications in here. What is good, you can change this to, uh, to obey the, uh, these notifications. So if your Windows is an alarms only or priority only, the Teams notifications may not come true, even if your Teams would be on easy. Uh, or do not, yeah, if, if it's not, then do not disturb. All right, let's add a few things like a channel calendar. We can go to uh, HR and we have a new uh, kind of a tab here we can add and we have can see that there's a channel calendar and if you don't see it just write uh, start typing the channel and you can add a channel calendar 
And this is a view to that team's meetings that are targeted to this channel. So this is always filtered. So this is only showing the channel meetings happening in the HR channel. And this is really useful if you have a large team or you have lots of channels and you have a lot of channel meetings there. You could have a, like a Teams specific channel. And in the Teams channel, you have the team specific trainings. You will create them as a channel meeting or info, info flashes or, or Teams coffees, something like that. Or you have an HR channel where you have a, a uh, you have trainings channel where you have all the trainings and in the HR channel you have the town halls. So people can go there and, and check them out in different channels. If I go to, let's say the Agile team is adding a new, add, adding the uh, channel me a uh, calendar there. And if I look that one, I don't see those webinars here because they are being and they have been scheduled to HR. And let's open the channel calendar. And in here, I can also add new events and I can change the view if I want to. But basically, it's just um, adding a new event and it's always going to the channel. So this is a very useful way. This is not the, hey, let me see everything is happening in the team. No, but you are seeing a filtered view per channel there. So you can start using the channel meetings even better than before because they are not lost. If even if it's not in your calendar, you can kind of join the meetings really easily uh, through that. And that's a really uh, good one. OK, let me see this one comment. The LinkedIn learning part is interesting. I remember uh, ready and hearing uh, about mix, uh, buying, bringing in some of the learning content from LinkedIn to office subscriptions. Yeah, now it makes sense in, indeed. And uh, I'm really looking forward for Ignite because I'm really puzzled if more about Viva is not in there. I would guess it's this is kind of teaser now and then we get really a more better insights through the Ignite there. Uh, what about uh, urgent Teams messages? Will they come through on Windows uh, notifications regardless of focus of assist setting? I don't think so. Um, that's an uh, interesting question. Too bad I can't really test that now with this environment. Can I? Uh, let's see, I just put it to um, uh, alarms only and uh, let's uh, hide it and go for uh, the admin. I can send an urgent message to myself. Uh, let's put it in there and let's see if I can make the message. Uh, where was the? It's been ages since I uh, created. I said delivery options there. I don't send urgent messages. <laughs> Hi there. Ready for uh, lunch. Uh, more demos. No lunch for people at this time. OK, we are sending the message. And now we are going back to, uh, back in here. And we can see it's flashing in Teams. But uh, I don't think anything was popped out. And if I click in here, we can see there's a new notification. But I didn't see any pop out happening. And we can, uh, uh, not that one, and that one, I will take this away from the screen so we can see another uh, urgent message. That was a good question. This first time I was getting that. And uh, I'm going to send it. And yeah, it's not happening here on the screen. I can see, see the flash I, and I can see that uh, message uh, coming here but it's not interrupting my focus mode. So it's not coming through. Good or bad, you decide, but uh, I have the messages there. Okay, uh, let's go for the uh, next one. So I don't get uh, too much tracked in here. The channel calendar was fun, and the, uh, what's really fun is the ability to use this. Uh, a whiteboard in a channel. So if you don't see again the whiteboard, you can uh, see it by searching and you can add a whiteboard to the channel. Mm, soon, today. Okay, there. I can give it a name. Let's put it the spotlight. Uh, spotlight fun pictures. Uh, sorry, not pictures, but uh, drawings. So we, we can create a whiteboard. 
Okay, two words about this. This is uh, a very great way to add a whiteboard to your channel. And even if I'm a guest user, let's see if I'm a, um, I should be a guest user here in the um, other, other user uh, in, in the other tenant. Let's see, I have to, uh, no, I don't have it in here. I didn't add it anymore, too bad. So I forget that one. But um, uh, is that guests can use that dashboard as well. So uh, dashboard, whiteboard as well. So if I were a guest, I could uh, come here and start using it. I, they did the test the other way around. This, this account was a member of that other tenant. So I can start adding drawings here. And, and anybody in the channel can access them and guests can access them. Great. Now, and uh, if I open, uh, let's uh, at the whiteboard, I have, it, I have it in here, let's refresh. I, because I created the whiteboard or I participated in that whiteboard, I can see it on my whiteboard list. If I'm a guest, I don't have access to that. I only can only use it through the channel. And it's loading slowly, but loading. Uh, something to, what, to really watch out, it's there already. Is that, um, if you are removing this one, you cannot add the same whiteboard back to the channel. It's the whiteboard is not lost. It's going to be in the whiteboard, but uh, you just can't add it as a tab uh, using this app. So it's fun, but it has limitations. Uh, lastly, of course, what uh, what is uh, something you should be or could be utilizing and using when you're using the Teams desktop client is the pop out. Here you can see pop out tab. You can start now. Uh, you have, are able to pop out applications, not just chat. So you can start using this in a popped out version. Some work better, some work uh, don't work that well. But I could, if I use a lot with uh, tasks, I can right click on it and pop out app. So I can get to my tasks directly in a, uh, in a separate window. This is uh, really useful if you have several displays and you want to kind of move the things around. As you can see, it is running in an Azure virtual machine. This doesn't have too much power. It's uh, getting sluggish uh, in there. But they work, they open up. Not every app works perfectly in, in a popped up version, but uh, where several of them do. For example, the custom apps. I have the company communicator. I, can, I cannot uh, choose that one, but uh, I can go ahead and pop out the bot I have, the Power Virtual Agent bot. So I can kind of use that one. I can have even tabs. So it's uh, really a nice experience in there. <clears throat> And uh, is it possible to add a channel calendar for private channels? Uh, no, because private channels doesn't don't have a calendar. They are not part of the team group, so so they don't have a calendar. So you don't uh, you have a, more, lots of limitations in private channels. And uh, yeah, hoping to see uh, some of the uh, ignite uh, something in there at the ignite, but uh, I I don't really know if that's going to happen or not. Okay, I'm going to move uh, back to the. Uh, web browser because uh, it's uh, much more smoother than running through the through the virtual machine all the time, and I have to uh, click through some of the tabs, so it's going to be easier. The first one I want to show I mentioned is the task publishing, and I have enabled I have lots of themes here like Sirius and Zircon and whatever themes as well, and I have recreated the hierarchy how these themes are related together. And that allows me to put different properties for these themes that are not existing anywhere else but in the hierarchy. So if I go to published lists, this is the screen I can use to create a new list. So this is going to be a new task list and I have three kind of starting points I can use. This is defined in the hierarchy settings. I could use the kind of the serious group or the circum bank group or them both. So I could be able to target the publishing of that ta task list to, uh, to different teams that are found in this uh, in these hierarchies. But I have already uh, selected the serious group and I have recreated these updated instructions for web March and I just put the uh, put the, the spotlight ad on display. I just add this one and this is of course urgent and it should be done by the electronics department. So you can define these buckets, and these buckets are planner buckets, 
uh, that uh, where this task is going to end when this is published to those teams. Yeah, these tasks end up in the team planner. These are planner tasks. So, of course, those teams have to be adapted to use the planner, so they know there's going to be tasks in there and kind of published through that. And uh, I can then create uh, tasks. I can have them to have uh, different due dates. And for example, just uh, mark this one to be done tomorrow. And uh, I can pre-create this stuff and I can duplicate if, if I want to rename it or delete it. And then I have some published lists. But this is the uh, very simple way. But these buckets that are going to be used are defined in the hierarchy. And if those buckets don't exist in the themes where this is published, it will be created. So let's publish. And this is the beauty. You can now just choosing through the hierarchy, what are your target teams where you are publishing these tasks? I have different teams here, but they also have different uh, properties. Like I want to choose only a large stores or mega stores where this is going to go. And this is showing zero of three selected. And then I can see, OK, this is the Southwest and East West has those. And if I choose an electronics department and the hardware department, I can see, OK, now I again have those three, perhaps the fresh one, nothing added because I have these unless I click the uh, small ones there too or something like that. So as you can see, I can ta uh, find the target teams. Uh, in this example, the stores, but it could be departments, units, uh, where you are sending these tasks. And I can select them all very easily, or if I don't have any selections here, I can go ahead and choose a different area for example. The south area stores are going to get this one. But in this case, I'm just going to be choosing two once I know that, okay, that's uh, not going to work. So let me go ahead and publish these tasks for two teams. And that, that's a very easy way to kind of start tracking. This is not always real time, so it's when I'm going to do those changes and updates to those teams, uh, I won't be able to kind of see all of them in real time. Let me just check and remind uh, where I uh, sent them, because uh, this is uh, store one and mega store. Okay, let me go and check out the store one and mega store, and uh, let's go there, and I have the tasks in here. And I can see there is no bucket. I distribute these time masks and protective gear. Let's put that. Uh, let's put that to Sula admin to take care about disinfecting devices. Sounds like an admin job for me. And the bulletins, yeah, sounds like an admin. Uh, I can take care of the putting on this uh, the, and the add-on display. And this is not updated. And yes, I already actually did that. And uh, stay stay bullet is happy taking care of too. And then. We have the task list in Megastore. I really should change that name. We can see the same tasks. And their buckets are in different order, but we can see they are there. And in this team, it's the admin that's taking care of that. And updated instructions to hardware stuff, I take care of that. So I'm assigning these tasks to some people. This is what those teams should do. And that one is perhaps taken care of. Now, it's going to take a while when this update but uh, as you can already see, there's going to be like assigned and completed information. If I go to the task list, I can see how, how these the, uh, tasks have been uh, uh, worked on. And if I refresh and go to the updated instructions, so hopefully they soon update or I just move forward and show an existing team about that. But uh, this will kind of uh, get that information I, and I will be kind of digging. I can see now that in Megastore has just updated and I can see what, how it's been assigned and completed there. So it's happening here. This uh, add-on display has been completed in all uh, teams. Or if I want to take a look what's happening with the disinfecting devices, I just go to three dots and can uh, view details or review report. The report is better so I can sound, see on team level who has done it and who hasn't. I think this is a very powerful feature. And think about this as version one, because it just came out. But uh, if you have a kind of uh, needs for this, this is a really, really useful. Okay, um, 
going to drag my time really uh, forward here. So let's speed up and go to Insights demo. Going to show the Insights uh, application here. And you can see that I have something I should uh, stay connected with my common col collaborators. I can get the tasks here. Yes, that's helpful. Yeah, we can submit it. Or I can have some activities here. Or I can go to my focus time, protect time protection here and, and kind of uh, start uh, reserving time very easily. It's not very much, but that's something. Then on the topics part, there isn't the topics application, but you can start you bringing these uh, topics to teams by adding them to SharePoint pages and adding that content. I have two topics here, Viva and Sulava Labs, so I can see what's the topic all about and I can hit, hit, hit uh, click here to view the details. So I can get the information page about this topic, uh, how, how it's, uh, what's relevant about that, what more I should know about it. And I can add these topics with the hashtag. So if I go here and start adding a topic and it will suggest me some topics like the app, uh, project app X, I update this one. And I have the topic that I can access directly from this um, uh, from this SharePoint page. And I can see the people who are relevant to that, if there's some resources there. And if I go to the details, I can open the topic page and I can see, okay, this is the information. And now again, I can see the, uh, the map uh, of, of the topic. So this is slightly, uh, not always there uh, fully, but, I can use that as a search as well. Let me see a uh, search for uh, project X or project. Uh, let's just uh, search for project X. And it will surface that topic card uh, right in my Microsoft search as well. So these are, uh, this is a very, very quick demo about this. Uh, perhaps it'd be even more faster than I thought. But in the topic center, you can then start, um, can start seeing uh, what kind of confirmed connections there are and uh, what kind of topic topics management you want to do. There are a couple of suggestions. There are published topics and I can go ahead and open and, and see uh, what this topic is all about and, and opening that one. So it's there, it's not perfect. And here I can see the map. So it's still on a bit uh, short one. It's not the great looking map that uh, was, uh, was shown in the, those screenshots, but this is something that can be used. Okay, approvals. There's going to be, a, you can create new approval requests uh, in the approvals application. Create an easy name, put on the names, and you can put on details. And if you put any attachments, they will go to your OneDrive and it will be shared for these approvers. That's a really easy way, and you can customize the responses as well if you want to create those ad hoc approvals. And instead of just doing the ad hoc approvals, we could go, uh, let's go to first line workers and we start a new conversation and we can create a uh, channel approval request. Uh, brand, uh, we want a new uh, change in the coffee machine. I just put myself in there and, and uh, we could put the attachments or custom responses like uh, uh, we need some uh, something else here. We want the Starbucks or something like that. Uh, we can put the uh, public by uh, Starbucks and of course we can put the public and that's his, his name there. So that's uh, going to go for approval and when the manager is going to get that notification so everybody in the team can see that it's been requested and uh, it will eventually fire up the approval and notification. But since I'm in a hurry, I want to kind of uh, check it from here and I can see, okay, just a request and I can, well, because it's my request, I can cancel it, but I could have this, okay, let's go for Starbucks, for example. That's one way to create this custom ones or, or just use the approve and decline, uh, reject ones, but this is something uh, that can be used. And there's got to be a notification, okay, that has been approved and it's shown in the channel that has been approved and then people can see uh, what uh, the result. So that's a, a very effective way. But of course you can use it in different ways, like um, the channel, I have just have to uh, check it from here, there. 
a team, new team request that's something where you would be using the approval uh, spotlight demo and uh, demo and yes i did check that the test and this can you can get the request from both from form from power app from somewhere else and you just include that approval process in the middle so the admins or somebody perhaps the manager can approve that team and then it goes forward in the uh, in, uh, through that uh, process of, of creating the team i have the approval request and i can say okay this is the this is the pending response from several people one is enough i just hit the approve and it will be submitted and sent forward and i have here a message i can show so okay, I could be approving it through the uh, chat message or I could be approving it with, uh, through the email and I can see the result and it will then start creating uh, the team soon uh, when it goes forward that okay the demo uh, it's the, the new team needs to be created and, and so forth. Sometimes uh, there's some delays in the flow. Of course uh, um, okay there's the demo and yeah, I got that, got that in there as well. So I was, would be able to approve it in different places. Let's go for <coughs> files. And I have created like this approval request process. Normally, you don't get to access flows in the, uh, through the files tab in Teams, but you can, of course, create some clever formatting there and ask for Azure, use the Azure uh, logic apps uh, to handle the request. So it's a URL request, goes there, and eventually it will go to the list and that will fire up the approval process here in Teams. So you can kind of go through that um, premium licensing requirement. You can do that with the premium flow as well. But uh, if you use Azure Logic Apps, you can combine different words together. Like when you get something happening in, in some system, you can take bring the approval process right into Teams. There's some delays before <clears throat> some of these fire up because um, uh, the flow has that capability. It's not a paid, a paid flow, so that's why sometimes these demos uh, take a while. But uh, let me see if there's okay. There, the approval request is not here yet. So let's fire up more. We can add more approval requests. One of the approval requests I, I have created here is that if you are using something that's in totally different tenant, this is. Uh, uh, the demo the tenant somewhere, and uh, it's not connected to the Sulava Labs tenant anyway. But I have added there a possibility to kind of combine these two, uh, two tenants together with approval. Perhaps you have an, your business central dynamics in other tenant, and you want to bring that information to Teams. Uh, so let's add a new customer uh, in here. And, and it's uh, going to be saved and saved. And at this time, it's uh, the Azure Logic Apps is waiting for that. OK, there's a new customer in that specific place or something happening. And bringing that information to our, to our Sulava Labs tenant, and it will eventually uh, show up in, in the list that, that I should be approving that, uh, approving that um, uh, request. Yeah, things take time. And the other third uh, I have is basically I have a created connector. This is something you can do with the standard flow. If, if you have a block uh, block somewhere, somebody is uh, putting like a, a demo post post and uh, put uh, put some words there like demo demo and demo some formatting there. So if you want to keep track on somebody's blog. Uh, you can kind of hook into that and it can go through an approval process. Is that article okay to be published somewhere uh, inside your teams? For example, sharing that for everyone in the, uh, in the organization. So here, for example, now the business central uh, approval has landed. Is that uh, there's a new customer and we could go ahead and take a look at the, what's the information we have about it and then we can approve. So it would be written to the sales team in this case uh, for, ref uh, for reference. And uh, you could start working on that. Perhaps you want to create a new team. And that's of course interesting that the new team request uh, didn't go forward, but um, I don't want to wait on that uh, looking at the time at the moment. 
and there's going to be the one uh, running with the approval of the new blog post. Uh, it's not in, in here yet, but perhaps we just approve a post and go there and see, kick it up and, and running. So it should kind of re read that information and then go forward. Okay. <clears throat> and now I have the approval request about that post. We can see the post link, so we can do this auto in a process. We can see some of the information in HTML. And when we are approving that, carrying that information uh, here in Teams, and I think it was writing that to the, uh, not chit chat, but perhaps in general announcements. So we can see that uh, post in here. And those are just the examples how you can integrate teams with other external systems using the pretty simple stuff with the flow with some Azure logic apps and approvals bringing making teams the hub for approvals in here and yeah there was the <coughs> mention about the sending the email so I have sent that email here earlier and now you can see the formatting uh, example in here so there's this email messages so, uh, showing that in this format okay I haven't run this badly out of time in, in a long time, but now, now it was the time. Okay, uh, something that's really important to know is that um, Teams Pro was announced. I saw the announcement in the Admin Center today. It's basically a kind of add-on or a, not necessarily add-on, but the service plan that's going to be part of the E3, E5, A3, A5 and business basic. Uh, so basically bring in uh, the capabilities for uh, meeting intelligence and webinar capabilities. So in case you are using E1, F1, something like that, it looks like you cannot create those webinar requests. Probably you can't, uh, won't be able to uh, use the dynamic views. So all these fancy features that are coming to the Teams meetings look like that uh, based on all this. This is all the information I have is that uh, it, uh, sorry, it looks like um, it's going to be kind of uh, been part of these few um, uh, subscriptions. And so these capabilities will be there on, um, on default, but you can turn them off uh, by deselecting the Teams Pro from some users or on the vice versa, you may want to turn it off if you want to test those first with a limited number of people, for example. But be aware and be uh, notice this is rolling out uh, in a month, roughly mid March. So that's Ignat stuff. Of course, what's happening in the Microsoft Teams roadmap? Yeah, those uh, large teams, chat increases, calling experience, the whiteboard is getting a new content types, and most of this stuff is coming uh, in February, March. So this is basically Ignat stuff. The new search experience was earlier coming in. Uh, December, but now it's for June and jam, uh, June summer. So basically, Microsoft Search in Teams it's it's been delayed. Uh, for, it was delayed for six months. The great things for the admins, of course, there's something like one-to-one -one call recordings policy. It will be defaulted to off. So if you record one-to-one -one calls, admin re action required, and a management of Power uh, Teams templates is going to be possible with PowerShell. But also you can. Uh, use Teams templates with template policies, so not everybody is seeing every uh, template available, and that's a really, really great uh, addition there. And that's a lot of stuff on the roadmap and lots of stuff coming uh, quite soon. So you can kind of um, uh, take a look what's in there and see what, what's affecting your organization. But then, of course, things like history menu and creating a planner task directly from a message that are really, uh, really useful, or seeing sharing the messages to teams from Outlook as it's uh, coming uh, hopefully now. A look in the future and going to the extended time, I won't so be about this, this might happen, uh, but basically it's going to be a big launch of these teams virtual events and meetings. I'm kind of su suspecting there's going to be lots of stuff added to the roadmap concerning events and meetings. And what they are, we don't know yet, but uh, we will know in a month. But uh, 
it will be roughly six months or perhaps even nine months roadmap, but that's what I expect it to happen. Teams as a platform, you already saw the approvals, the flows uh, using uh, approvals applications and bringing in applications like uh, VBAC and just everything like that to Teams. It, that's a big thing. And we are going to be seeing most likely new applications, not just the Viva ones, but uh, it will, I would be really surprised if there weren't any. The Teams as a platform is going to get better. There's going to be more uh, investments there. That's my expectation. The first of all, Teams bringing these bots and everything else into Teams uh, is going to be involved and getting more features, not perhaps the big ones, but uh, kind of evolving that and the admin and reporting capabilities and kind of you sort of short map items for admins. Things are advancing, there's going to be a little additions here and there for all of those. But this is something I expect that we are going to be learning about Microsoft Viva a lot more from there. And there's going to be more AI everywhere. It's That's the trend. That's that's what I expect to see, uh, kind of bringing in more intelligence, just like with Viva, uh, we can see the topics and, and uh, learning parts, search, everything is getting smarter and smarter and we'll be using uh, dynamic views in Teams meetings. So things are evolving and AI is going to be involved there. On my personal wish list, uh, I really hope the client performance, that's the one thing that's going to get uh, improvements. Of course, the uh, normal pain for you users, especially consultants, is that we have multiple accounts and multiple tenants we work with. So any super improvement there would be a better one. Uh, adding a personal account is possible in Teams now, but uh, what we really want is adding multiple organizational accounts. Uh, I have my fingers crossed for that that kind of parts. But of course, features like breakout rooms, that was the version one they published. Let's go for version 1.5 or version two, where we can pre, uh, pre recreate those rooms in advance and, and kind of to have more organizations perhaps sharing that content from breakout rooms. Those are top three asks, I think. Team templates, yeah, that was also version one. Any improvement there is really a good one. So the big themes for Microsoft Teams basically for this year, I think Teams is going to be the event platform. It's just not the Teams as a platform in work, but basically that's the platform that's going to rule uh, or going to aiming to rule the, the market in, in meetings and events in the future. So 21 is going to take the big steps there towards that one. So it's a kind of a uh, kind of a lots of announcements uh, hopefully are going to happen there. Business application processes, basically teams as a platform, that's a big thing and the integrations. Uh, I kind of tried to show you some ideas how these integrations are working already and that's the way forward. You can bring in stuff information, you can bring in business applications using the power apps in teams, in teams meetings, everywhere there, that's a yeah, big thing. And you build on this, you build on security compliance information protection provided by Microsoft 365. That's the key thing why, of course, one of the big things why you want to use the Teams as a platform. Build on your existing stuff, but don't try to recreate the security or information protection. Teams provides a lot of uh, uh, additions uh, to that one. So there's all, all, already a lot of services that will take care of those. Uh, Okay, interesting, it's not shown. Let's try again there. Uh, we find sites and well, workplace analytics. This is going to be a big theme and this is going to involve a lot. Uh, we are going to be seeing that workplace analytics in uh, much more involved next, next year, especially when you think about uh, uh, when we are working in hybrid environments, about the mental health and stuff. But uh, and the, perhaps the key message is that, that we are human, we are not robots. And, and uh, that, that's something there's going to be human touch to all these through Viva. And of course, the privacy is a serious matter. There's a lot of discussion about privacy of wars. And um, uh, I think they are going to take that seriously as well. So we are, uh, there's already the option to, of course, to anonymize the data, which is a big thing uh, in there. Knowledge management and learning through the Viva, we can see that race. Uh, with topics, with the learning, a new learning app and everything like that, bringing that to people so we can be more proactive. We are not redoing things for, 
for redoing is say, say what, uh, what, uh, what we are reusing what we already have. So, so it will keep us in a business. We learn new things, we evolve, we expand. And also, of course, the company we work for is uh, needing that. Yeah, if there's still somebody out there, I'm going to wrap it up. Uh, just a good reminder, Skype for Business Online, if you are using that, don't or, or at least have a plan to kind of uh, retire and move to Teams soon. We have other Ignite events have coming up. Um, I have finished version of this webinar on this Friday, but uh, beyond that, we have a similar exclusive event for uh, Microsoft Ignite. Uh, that's called the Road to Ignite event, and you can get an access to that if uh, so. Go to that URL and, and request one. Then the Ignite is happening. That's a, not, of course, a Sulava event, but uh, uh, that's happening between fourth of uh, the second and fourth of March. But then on fifth of March, we are going to have a webinar about what's happened at Ignite. I'm going to do that with Timo Bergius, and that's going to cover Teams and the Microsoft 365 and the Azure. Kimo is uh, taking care of those parts. So it's kind of a one hour sort of uh, only webinar, most likely. But on the 10th of March, I'm going to do an Ignite Spotlight. So I'm going to go through all these Ignite uh, releases, announcements, anything related to Teams, uh, probably including Microsoft Viva as well. So register to that webinar. And if you want to register the Finnish version, then that, that's going to be on the following day. And if you want to get started, we can help you. Uh, we have a proof of concept kind of offering here. And please be in touch with us if you want to uh, get started, how you can use Teams as a platform using the Power Platform or the uh, custom applications, and we can take your Teams to the next level. So take, take a look at that and, and come back to us. We can help. But of course, we have uh, lots of services. We have three major parts on our services. We do the infrastructure and cloud platform and security part. We have super experts there. We have the modern work part, which Teams is included. I'm kind of included in this part mostly, but we do the internet, extranet. Uh, lots of things around here. How to utilize the uh, knowledge and, and the approvals, etc. And of course, the business productivity part with projects, power platform, analytics, and, and everything in there, including the IoT. Those are kind of three main areas, and we provide services uh, in a consulting way. And of course, we do the implementations and, and change management part there. We have a very good change management. Uh, people there, or a group of people, our change management leads and champions will help you get started with teams. And we provide the advisory services for ITs uh, or companies so that they can keep on track what's happening and how, how you can protect your data better and how you can take care of the, your Microsoft 365 and Azure better. And now, of course, um, how you can utilize it better. And of course, we provide trainings on all of this. So if you're just regard Teams training, hey, please, please be in touch. We can help you. And just contact me or us and, and let's book a free meeting and uh, let's get you started in there. The takeaway slide, yeah. Teams meetings, virtual events, that does, I, I think I said that enough. Uh, Microsoft Viva is about people and it's about human and life. Uh, bring that to take and it's going to be a big thing and, and take us uh, forward in there. Power Platform, yeah, I love that stuff and Microsoft Teams loves that stuff so we can start bringing the business applications and business processes there very easily. And don't forget the bots. But the hub for approvals, that's what I, something I want to really showcase it. That's a really important part as well. And Teams as a platform. And uh, while there was other big steps in the 21, I really think this is the really, really big theme you should start working on. I already shot, I don't know, 10 minutes forward and without looking the questions. But hey, please do give me a feedback. I know I went out of time, but uh, uh, you, you can note that too. And uh, please do read the register in and, and let me know. And I'm going to take a look if there's any more questions. No, there weren't any, any extra questions. But uh, uh, in that case, of course, I thank you all. You still have uh, perhaps a minute or something like that to drop in the question. And I can see if I can answer that. And if that, uh, if you, this webinar is over before you can ask that or you have something that comes to your mind later, please be in touch. There's my. Uh, details in their LinkedIn and Twitter and uh, email or Teams message and, and 
let's uh, get your question answered. OK, thank you, Vesa, so much about your <laughs> webinar. And I will also say that uh, thank you for all the participants. And there is all the information about the web upcoming webinars and Vesa contacts and Sulava contacts in the Q&A. So just go there if you want to example register for the upcoming webinars. And for my part, I also thank you all very much. And thank you, Vesa. It was really good. Hey, th thank you, Suvi, uh, for moderating. And let me see those questions. And there's some que comments that uh, thank you very much and very useful. And, and that's a great thing seeing people enjoy it and, and kind of taking uh, something with them from this. And uh, this is a big package of information in a very fast pace. So it's, uh, of course, uh, a, lot to, a lot to kind of uh, uh, digest in one in one sitting, but there was also uh, other thank yous, so it's it's great to see this. Thank you. So I know there are people out there. <laughs> <laughs>